So Costa Rica will kick off their World Cup campaign up against Spain in a very, very spicy Group E. Can they upset the apple cut and get themselves a flyer? We'll take a little look next. <laughs> Right, folks, back with another, of course, a, a, a what is it, World Cup Rivals video. We are taking a look at the Costa Rica POV, that's right, against Spain in Group E. We'll get to that shortly. If you're new, where you've been, subscribe, thumbs up, hit the little bell, your non stop shot for Rovers content, Costa Rica football content, World Cup content, right here, of course. Don't go anywhere else, we've got it all here. Every POV covered, uh, of course, you can get it right here. No, it's free. It's pretty much all it costs is a like. Smash the old like, of course. Also, big shout out to the VIPs, they are the patrons, you know who you are. But anyway, for my small corner of the YouTube universe, us, tell them your name, where else you're calling from, and what's cool. Or maybe you tell us a little bit about your Costa Rican heritage. Sure. So you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I'm at, at CRC Football. Uh, everybody just calls me Eddie from Brooklyn. Proud Tico, but I've been essentially raised in Brooklyn, New York for, for most of my life. I, uh, Of course, I come from two very proud Costa Rican parents. That's where my heritage comes from. But, uh, you know, I've been in New York City pretty, pretty much my whole life, with the exception of the four years that I was in the Navy. And uh, when I got out, I came back to New York and I've been just kind of in, embedded in my Costa Rican heritage since. Appreciate that. Appreciate your, uh, your, your giving up a bit of your time to talk all, the way, all things Costa Rica. But, of course, you're kicking off the campaign up against one of the World Cup uh, winners of the past, Spain. Uh, maybe with, with of course, uh, uh, your family and, and, and Costa Rica itself. What are the expectations for this World Cup for Costa Rica? But what are your hopes and dreams for the Spanish game in, in day one? Expectations are a bit of a mixed bag. You know, I, I think everybody is, is pretty aware of, of the tough task that we have at hand. I don't think anybody is going into this World Cup with high expectations that we're going to make a deep run. Uh, we're, we're not that delusional as a fan base, but we are we are very, you know, very happy of the, of the experience that we had in 2014. And I think that's what everybody's trying to draw back to. I try to get those 2014 vibes where we had just as equally a difficult group and, and we were able to top it. So, I think what everybody's looking at is really the run of form that we've had uh, closing out World Cup qualifying, where we only dropped two points, and that was away at Mexico. Everything else was three points. And then, of course, you beat New Zealand in the World Cup playoffs. So everybody's viewing that as, as a way of carrying momentum into this tournament and hoping that it can continue into this group. Uh, looking back at 2014, and you even have some of those players that, that were, were on that squad. You look at Yeltsin Tejeda, you look at Kayla Navas. Uh, they're probably still going to be able to make impacts on this squad. Uh, and, and maybe let these youngsters know that it is possible that you don't need to look at the group as, as that much of a daunting task. For for the game against Spain, I think for us, in all honesty, when you look at the group, I think it worked out perfectly that this was our opening game. If you look at all three matches, and I always liken World Cup matches to sort of like boxing prize fights, it all comes down to styles. And I think Spain's style is, is what suits us the best. And I, I think it's the one where we're most capable of taking advantage. And, and they probably have less possibility of really exploiting our weaknesses. I say that because Spain does have difficulty breaking down a low block, and, and I expect us to deploy a low block, potentially in a 5-4-1 or a 4-4-2. That'll depend on how Luis Fernando Suarez wants to deploy Joel Campbell. But I, I would imagine it's going to be, be a low block and then you know try and counter and, and, and beat Spain in transition when you have a pacey winger like uh, a Jewison Bennett, when you have a pretty good hold-up striker in Anthony Contreras. Like The pieces are there to be stubborn in defense, absorb Spain's possession, which can be horizontal at times. It's not necessarily going to be vertical. Uh, and, and just be patient and, and make sure that they're not able to break you down and then look for moments that you can just punish them. They're only going to need about one or two. That's kind of how it played out against New Zealand, and I think that's going to be the same recipe for the first game against Spain. All right, great, great analysis and overview of that game. Now, with your Costa Rican hat on, uh, and of course, maybe with a bit of that uh, retro flavor there, just how far do you think this Costa Rican team can go? If you're going to ask me personally, I think it's three games in, three games out. I, I have my issues with our coach, Luis Fernando Suarez. I, I think as a national team manager, the bare minimum that you need to do is pick the right squad. You have 26 players that you need to select, and you need to select the best 26. And I don't think he did that. When you look at a player like Keisha Fuller making this call up and you leave home a Christian Gamboa, who has World Cup experience, who's playing in the first division in the Bundesliga for BFL Bochum, and I know he wasn't involved in the World Cup qualifying process because of injury, because of COVID, but he's available now. He's in form in Germany, and you don't take him. When you make a starlet, an 18-year-old striker in Manfred Ugalde, quit the national team because you deploy him uh, in, in the wrong sense tactically and then you throw him under the bus because he didn't do 
what he really physically can't do. And then he quits the national team. So now you're pretty much down two strikers. And then I look at the depth. You know, when, when you're able to call up 26 and you have a pretty good young core that you're able to pick from, I don't think he picked the best national team. And you take a player like Brian Ruiz, who's already planning his retirement match next month in Alajuela against Duente. It just it gave me an overall sense that there are 32 teams in the World Cup, but only 31 truly went with the best rosters to compete. And I don't think we're one of them. So I, I think three games because of the group itself. But I just feel like if we had better leadership, if we had a coach that had a better understanding of what he had at his disposal, we would have a better opportunity to make it out of this group. No, oh, critical, critical there, which is which is what we want. Real opinion, real fans giving it straight to you. No, no, this, uh, this, uh, whatever paper over the cracks sort of kind of stuff. But with that twenty six that's been selected, uh, and maybe not too much focus on the the familiar names that we know, the Joel Campbells, the Brian Ruiz. Who is the man that's going to get us off our seat with excitement? I think with excitement, it'll be Jewis and Bennett. Uh, you, you kind of already know him a little bit, having his uh, his move to Sunderland. I was actually a little bit surprised that at 17 he qualified for a work permit uh, relatively quickly and he was the one that I, I really wanted to get the start against New Zealand because when, when you look at our shape when you play Joel Campbell on the wing Joel Campbell normally plays inverted he's going to tuck inside he's going to play more as a, a third midfielder in our system so what we lack is that dynamism that pace on the wing and Jewison and Bennett brings that on the left side as a natural left footed winger and he's the one that created the goal for Costa Rica against New Zealand he assisted Joel Campbell and I, I think him being able to elevate his game, train at a higher level at Sunderland over the last couple of months, he's going to come in better form. He's going to come in as a better player. And I think he's going to get significant minutes for Costa Rica because it just he just tactically fits so perfectly, especially for what we want to do in transition. So Jewison and Bennett is definitely the player that I think will get uh, most of the World Cup fans excited if you don't know him yet. Uh, and then another name that I, I might throw out there just because of defense, maybe not excitement. I like a clean sheet. That's just always been my style. Uh, Juan Pablo Vargas is a center back that I, I'm really excited about getting his opportunity because he's truly matured into our best center back over the course of the last six months. He's playing in Colombia right now. He's probably the best player in that league, just led them to a league title. So I feel like if Costa Rica has any shot of advancing out of the group, it's going to be because of a stubborn defense. And I think he's going to be the one that's going to have to captain that because you can't rely on Francisco Calvo and Oscar Duarte for three full games and expect not to be punished with an individual error. So I think Juan Pablo Vargas is probably the other name that I know nobody knows about that, that can get you excited if Costa Rica is able to navigate itself out of this group. Well, of course, it all begins on, on day one against Spain. What are your uh, major concerns about them? What's their area of strength that's going to be the downfall of Costa Rica? Yeah, I think it's really just going to be their ability to tease us out of position. And I just mentioned Francisco Calvo. I feel like Calvo, out of all of our center backs, is probably the least disciplined. And he can be pulled out of position uh, with, with interchanging movements. He can be moved out of position with teasing play a, across the back line. And then, you know, that he can be beat over the top with, with a really good ball. So I feel like if, if Spain is going to be able to break us down, it's going to be because they're very patient. And they're picking their moments for when they're going to try and, and, and beat us over the top by pulling Calvo out of position or even Duarte out of position. Um, their their ability to, to maintain the ball and counter press and win it back quickly, not giving us those spaces in transition. I think if they can do those two things, they should have a pretty comfortable win. Well, well, well the proof is in the pudding, as they say uh, in the in, in Britain. But uh, uh, of course, uh, if you let's just say I know you've got your reservations with your coach, but let's just say he has a bit of food poisoning, cannot pick the eleven. What would the eleven be? You start uh, against Spain. So I'm going with the five four one. I know it's not pretty, it's not impressive, but it, it'll morph into a three four three and attack. So Kayla Navas, obviously at, at goalkeeper, uh, left wing back. I'm going to start Ronald Matarita. Uh, my three center back pair, I'll start on the left going from Calvo, Juan Pablo Vargas as a sweeper, and then to his right, I'm going to put Kendall Waston, who I am I was really upset that he didn't get his opportunity in 2018 because Machio, for whatever reason, left him on the bench. I think he gets his opportunity in this World Cup to showcase that he really is one of the top center backs in Costa Rica. And then uh, on the right side, uh, I would put Carlos Martinez, who's a right wing back that not, not everybody really knows about, 23 years old, uh, plays for San Carlos in Costa Rica. I want to play a double pivot in midfield, but I wanted to be uh, a little bit more of established roles. So Yelson Tejeda is going to be my defensive midfielder, my six, to, to kind of help that back line. And I want to play Brandon Aguilera 
next to him in midfield. Brandon Aguilera is a 19-year-old, uh, very attacking, uh, creative midfield type. He just uh, got his signing in the offseason to Nottingham Forest. got loaned back to Juan Azteca, so I'm hoping he gets to join them after this World Cup. But it's going to give me that balance of you know defensive balance and then some attacking flair. In midfield, I'll play Joel Campbell on the right, inverted, give that, that, that wing to Carlos Martinez to be able to bomb forward as he tucks in and creates that, that numerical overload in midfield. And of course, Jewison Bennett on the left, and Anthony Contreras is going to be my nine for the entire World Cup. Uh, and that's going to be my, my low block, my 5 for one shape, and then I'm going to look to transition and really try and, and get Joel Campbell on the ball so he can hit that long diagonal and transition, get Jewison Bennett in some space. All right. does look sound exciting when you, put, when you spell it that way. Now, there is going to be another game going on in Group E, Germany against Japan, for the best chance for Costa Rica. What do you want to see in that game? But what do you think will happen in that game? I, I need Germany to take care of Japan and Spain for me. The way I see us navigating out of this group, if at all possible, starts with a positive result against Spain and then uh, a victory against Japan, or if you can reverse it. As long as it's four points minimum, ideally you would get six, but I think four points minimum between those two matches. And then and then Germany takes care of both of them, and they, they come into our match with six points. They're, they'll rotate, understanding that they have the group pretty much solidified, and, and then we have a week in Germany to play against. That's That, to me, is, is how I realistically see us getting out of this group, but I'm not too optimistic about it. In terms of that matchup between Germany and Japan, I, I, I kind of like Japan's chances in this World Cup. Japan, of all the matches, and their style of play scares me the most, only because I think that they're they're going to be able to really keep us on our toes, and they, they'll make our midfield play a lot slower, and they'll, they'll show their legs in that game. So I'm hoping for a Germany victory, but I can kind of see it playing out to, you know, a 1-1 one -one draw. Wow, there we go. There we go. Now, of course, for this game, your opening match against Spain, what if I have to push you for a scoreline? What's it going to be? My head is telling me Spain won nothing. But your heart is telling you what? My heart is praying for, for Costa Rica won nothing. But I'm, I'm going to stick. I, I do a lot of uh, analysis. I used to work for Optisport, so everything I do comes from a very, you know, black and white analytical world i try not to let my emotions get the best of me i'll give you the real uh my heart is always going to be for costa rica i love this country with with all my heart i've got tat costa rican tattoos all over me but you know i i can't i can't go i can't deviate from my head i'm gonna say spain one nothing. i appreciate that appreciate that appreciate that of course thanks again for stopping by of course we'll look at that in-depth analysis costa rica that's how they do it that's how they're gonna win it if they can win it against spain of course, we'll be back, hopefully, check in with Costa Rica as they go, and hopefully they have a long-winded World Cup. Of course, just like all the 32 teams, uh, I'm wishing you all the best. But really, I'm wishing Germany the best. But, of course, Costa Rica are there, and they're in there, and they're contenders to cause some problems here. So subscribe, thumbs up, give some love in for Costa Rica. Subscribe, of course. Check out the links down below, Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, all that kind of stuff right here. A blubber overseas. We'll be back with more uh, sometime soon. Of course we are.